Welcome back, everybody, to cover the LCS Challengers League promotion tournament. That's the Maryville that I was expecting to see. Pure domination in the early game coming into a really, really nice performance, specifically for those solo laners, Niles and Get Back. Beatdown Maryville looked really good. That was probably the, the most one-sided game we saw all series. Absolutely, and we got to see more of Maryville's strength in that early game, like you were mentioning, Graves. A again, really thinking drafting game one and two were not it. This time around, they got something more to what they liked, and they got a lot of good lane matchups for them. Niles on the Pantheon was probably the best game I saw him on at this time and had the most impact. Shot down Quacker, and we saw the comp from AoE, where if they didn't get the ball rolling early on, GG well played. Also, 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 get also back on no the Olaf. No, no Olaf. Olaf. True. True. The draft <laughs> adaptions. They're learning. It's beautiful. Maryville it's had a 100% win rate against AoE when Quacker is not playing <laughs> Olaf. Mm -hmm. that's, a stat, that's a stat that we can continue to, to plug. And, and a really good showing from our collegiate representative. And, and again, just going to show how cool it is that a, a school, a uh, collegiate program, is able to compete at this highest yeah. level against a team that was you know, top 10, top 12 of the NACL. And they're looking to punch their ticket into the league for the summer split. And I think that ties in directly with our Rally Cry halftime show for this game. It's called Pop Quiz. And what we're going to do is kind of show a lot of the collegiate strengths here for you two on the desk. We're gonna go through some questions, each okay. revolving around a different school subject. Uh, and that is going to be oh, no. um, how we go about things. Oh. You'll have to write your answer on the piece of paper and afterwards um, show it to me like this. Um, also, by the way, isn't it cool that not only are all of Maryville obviously students, but I think every single player on AOE has also participated in CELOL in some capacity. Yes, you're right. Uh, it's, pre it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I mean, it's just the Im uh, the importance of having a, a good uh, yes. esports collegiate program. Wink, wink, universities, especially here in Ontario. <laughs> Come on. Yeah? yeah. You guys got some good ones. We got some. I mean, it's, 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 it's Western. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, Lynx is on Western, actually. So that, that's, exactly. a, that's another nice tie back here. All right, let's get into You're things welcome. here. We're going to start off. Your first period is in history class. So we're going to ask some questions about history. Which player out of the players in this tournament or in this game? Sorry, not this okay. tournament. I was going to say tournament. Started their pro career the earliest. So out of the 10 players here, who had the earliest start to their professional career? I'm going to oh. say... Oh, wait, oh, I have yeah, to write yeah, it down. You got to write it down. Gotta write I, was down. About to, I was about to spoil it. My bad, my bad. This includes semi-pro slash tier two, tier three, and uh, collegiate as well. Okay, I got mine. Okay, I have my answer. Oh god! All right, Wait, you wanna, we wanna reveal? I'm ready. In three, two, one, show me. Ooh, oh, Winnie and Odd Orange. So Mad Magical gets the point for that yeah, one. Come on, baby. Odd Orange was a sub on Complexity in 2014. Nine years later, still playing some League of Legends. How cool is that? That so, is cool. Yeah. Nice. One point 2014 was magical. nine years ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 2023. It was a while ago, for yeah. sure. Oh my god. Um, okay. One point to Magical here, and that is the end of your first period class. Next class, Science. We're going to go into the Science of League of Legends, which of course okay. is the draft. I want you to remind me what the last pick, the R5, of the game two draft between these two teams I'm, was. I, I wrote. I, game I have my two. Notes. I have my notes. Hey, wait. Are you are you cheating on the test? That sounds cheating like cheating. Yeah, this is no, not an open no, book. <laughs> no one said that it was an open book. <laughs> the last pick on R five. I, I I'm gonna give you guys ten more seconds. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna pretend that I'm not seeing you. You look at your your previous <laughs> notes. Okay. Oh, I remember. All right. Beatdown has his answer. Magical has his yeah. as well. Show me those cards in three, two, oh. one. Boom! Correct for both of you. Rel is the right answer. Skytech had a great game on that Rel in game two. Yeah, he he did. did. And I'll give you a fun fact real quick. Uh, he said to me recently during spring that when he, he thinks the champ is not very good in lane, and when he picks it, he's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Left it all the way through the bet, all the way through the draft. Yep. All right. Well, each of you get a point there. It is now two to one, magical. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Science class is over. Now, your your next sub subject, my personal least favorite, math. What I want you to do here is to calculate how much gold uh, Niles' core Pantheon build costs. That was Eclipse, oh, Back wait. Cleaver, and Steel Caps. I'll give you guys about thirty seconds to a minute to to figure this out. 
Magical, you look a little distressed. Are you all right? He's just doing the math in his head. <laughs> he, can we, okay, okay. He, he moved his eyes. We're, we're good. He's still thinking. Okay. All right. You guys both have the answer. Show me in three, two. Wait, hold on. I haven't written it oh. yet. I haven't written it yet. I saw you like go down, so I thought you wrote no, something. I, down. It was like one of those. Uh... Uh, it doesn't matter. It's okay, when you're like looking down to make it look like you're you're actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, got I was stalling. I was stalling. <laughs> All right, answers in three, two, one, boom. Oh, beats beat that. I beat can't. Got it. I can't beats see. Got it. Beats got you, it. Is it's that a seventy-five hundred? Oh, no, it's a five. Okay, seventy-five hundred. Okay, it was seventy-five hundred. Okay, it he's was 7300. 7300. Get the point because he's closer. Ah, uh, you know what? That's a good point. Not good guy, magical. Yeah, Give right. a point over to beat down. Yeah. yeah. Okay, two to two. So now we're tied up. All right. So this is when things get a little bit more creative here. Okay. Um, we're going to head into English class now. Where oh, I'm going to no. have you guys write me uh, a creative poem describing what was in the mind of Niles in some of, in one of those Pantheon team fights that we saw Maryville win. Got it. I just read it out for this one because my thing is backwards and Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're going to have to read this Lovely. aloud to me. And and your delivery no is okay. going to uh be, be important as well, so okay. I'll, I'll, I'll judge each of you and give you a, each one of you a point. How are we doing? This is this is always the sit sit back and, and think about things. The, the screen the screen says odd orange, but um, I'm, I'm going to have you write about Niles instead because... Deal. Yeah. All right. Do we each have, um, do we each have uh, a little bit of a short story to share with the class, everybody? I do. Oh, uh, it's not it. too creative, but it's funny. Who would like to volunteer? Beatdown, would you like to go first? Yes, I have it. Okay. <clears throat> Roses are red. Violets are blue. Lynx, if you're near me, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Well Katie done. Carey life. All right, magical. Um, I, I, I that's some good finished. points. I, I'm I've giving not, you a good grade, I, I have, for sure. I have not yeah, finished my assignment. So you're just not going to hand it in. Or you want to just... Uh, you can give me something incomplete if you want as well. I'll give you some partial credit. I you, you gave me like 10 seconds to write a poem. <laughs> I'm hey not man, that I, creative. I, I wrote one, bro. Like, you, okay, half yours was written by someone else. <laughs> and yet... I'm trying to be got original. A laugh. I'm you trying to work well. well. It worked well, I will say. All right, if 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 magical, you just want to forfeit this round, I can just get yeah, forfeit it. Instead. I, I don't know. All right. Wow. Oh, well, you're gonna need that back because we have one more. We have one more question to to do. Who's winning? Am I winning? Right now, beatdown is up three points to two. Uh, and our final class, maybe a little bit more of a fun one, uh, right. is art class. What I want you to oh, do no. is to wow. draw your favorite moment from game number three. 30 seconds, um, so you gotta be quick. Oh god. Pen, pen, okay. This is this is definitely the hardest one. I was thinking maybe we could have you guys like in MS Paint or something, but I think the, I think the I think having the handwritten gives it just a little bit more authenticity. So I, I actually Favorite like it moment. this way. Uh, okay. No pen work! All right, I'm gonna give you guys 10 more right, seconds. I'm done. 10, I'm done. What? nine, Finish. eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Magical, all right, magical is good. Beat down, final touches right now. Yep. All right, both hands off, hands off the paper. Hands off the paper. Okay, okay, oh, I okay. can't, cause then it'll put it down. <laughs> all right, magical, you're, you're, you're up first. Show me show me right. the art that you've okay, created. Okay, so I, I oh, drew nice. a book. It says BM book and it's, got, it's written by Get Back. Nice. I like, Do I get partial I like credit? I was the one who said BM book. Just throwing <laughs> like, that out there. What's part like of the cast? He, I like when he built cast? the book and then he made the people die. To be fair, that did happen. <laughs> That's pretty good. It was the book of death. <laughs> I, I will say a little bit, a little bit rudimentary. I would maybe have liked to see a little bit more expression. You think that's abstract. rudimentary? <laughs> You're about to see mine. Oh uh, well. Maybe maybe my students aren't doing so well today. Beat down. What do you got for me? 
All right, well, uh, I gotta put it up close because it's really small, but uh Oh, it doesn't even work. Oh, it's too bright. Uh, like... <laughs> I drew I drew a really stick figure Lee Sin stepping on a spider. Mm. Well, you know, it's when Otto Orange killed Winnie. That is a I good experience. That see is it. a good I Maybe see does it. it work from here? I can't see it. The blue. So, I don't Hold know. on. I'm I think gonna... he's making it up. I, I can't see it. I'm going to have to give the point to Matt. I'm it. sorry. Yes. Three to I three. understand. I feel like whenever we do these game shows, we end up tying. Uh, so it's a tie for both of you guys again yes. at three. So that is, yeah. of course, our halftime show. Why would you choose Rally six Cry. questions? You choose seven. It was five. No, it was five. And I gave each of you one point for I got two Rally points one. for uh, the, the poem because it was yeah, so yeah, better yeah. than yours. No, 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 no. It was five questions. I oh, gave you, just I gave you each one for Rel. And yeah. Oh, that's class. right. That's what happened. That's right. That's what it was. So another tie. But again, if the work that we were doing here uh, is any is as much as the the collegiate people are, I mean that's kind of doing them a disservice because the amount of work and dedication that they put in both of their studies as well as NACL play really really impressive. I'm excited to see Maryville potentially pull us to a game number five. We have draft for game four ready to go. Magical beatdown, take it away. Well, thank you, Graves. Uh, I'm glad to hear that at least you no know, we what was we get like a C a C grade there. Uh, uh, I'll take that. So I'll we'll take, take that. that. We'll take that. You know, at least we're we're kind of passing, so it's not passing. too bad. But we'll see. You, how... you know, a C a C is way better here than it is there. Also, so you know, is it or is it? Yeah. Or no, actually, a C is worse here. That's not good. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> C's passing here. Anyways, C passes that. here too, but that's not enough the point. of that. We're gonna pass on to that, and we're gonna get into this fourth nice. game. Maryville on to the blue side this time. AOE electing to be on red as we look at the bands. Olaf taken away. Like I said, the lesson has been learned. Yep. Whacker off the champion, but also another lesson has been learned by AOE. Varus taken away from Scary Jerry. Yeah, the Pryo. When Maryville are on blue side for this champion exceeds anything else. And Scary Jerry has definitely earned that ban. So now we're seeing the draft adaptions continue as we go here, where AoE looking to close the series off right now in this fourth game. And Maryville, we have the rumblings, the beginning. If you hear real quietly, that reverse sweep, the sound of the drums. I don't hear any drums. It's super subtle because it's only one game win. Okay. But after the next one, it'll be real loud. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'll have to keep my ears peeled for that one because right there, Nami actually banned as the final one by AoE, which Zaya, Annie, both left open right now for Maryville. And we talked about the Varus being the number one priority for Scary Jerry and for Maryville in the previous drafts. So I got to imagine this Annie pick, something that Get Back has really liked. That. It's something that they could go for, but instead it is this Rakan takeaway. Yeah, considering everything banned away, you're really afraid of the, the Zyra Rakan 1-2 on A, uh, from AoE. So Maryville opt to take that for themselves. psycho has been great on the pick, so it makes a lot of sense for both of those reasons. And you just remove another option. AoE can still very easily go for the Zaya, grab yeah. the Gragas for Winnie, as we've kind of seen AoE pull away from that recently. But it's still a really strong flex pick and a strong pick for Winnie in the jungle. And uh, the Zaya taken, is it's expected. And I am yeah. still looking at that Gragas, the flexibility it provides for the team as well. And put that in a couple different lanes, a couple different uh, options that you have for yourself. But Elise is something else that we have to kind of keep our eyes on. Something that we know it could have been oh. a possibility back and forth. But the Maokai that I had talked about before that completely got ignored in game three. Drafted here by winning. Yeah, you did point that out. And it's a really strong pick at the moment here. Great facilitator, great team fighter later on with the Nature's Grasp. So it's nice to see that one come through for Winnie as they adapt. And it's that tankier presence as well. And it felt like in that last game, everybody was pretty squishy, especially up against Scary Jerry's piercing arrows. Even though that won't be an option, he's locking in the Zeri. So mm -hmm. we've seen him play this one before. It's been a great team fighting pick for him. And overall, you know, it's Zeri. Right. We've all seen it. We know what it does. It's a good champ. Mm. Yeah, two items, certified Zeri moments, all, all that jazz. So I'm looking more at what they want to grab for Odd Orange here, because I'm expecting we are going to still have more of the typical draft here in game uh, game four. Yeah. Gragas, I like this too, because it still has that flexibility. Odd Orange can easily play it. We've already seen Get Back play it as well. Yeah. I love flexibilities in drafts like that. Yeah, you got a lot of op options here. Not much is oh, revealed. No. Wow, we're seeing it. No the way. hover. Wow. Skytech's going to early pick it there. And that, honestly, I like this because it's something you could see taken away by Maryville. Yes. So you want to make sure you can grab that for yourself. It pairs really nicely with the Maokai. You guys putting on your swimming caps, goggles, 
and uh, you got your dive buddies going into these team fights. And he here, as we get into the second part of Vans, Pantheon has been taken away as well from Nile. It's very interesting to see these adaptations here this late into the series between the two teams, what has been comfortable for each side. Nile's getting ahead both times on that Pantheon, just one game, unfortunately not able to translate that. And plus that Lee Sin, the flexibility it also has for the team. I like these takeaways from AoE. Agreed, both good bands. Now the Lee Sin means that we're like, we could like to see this Gragas go into the jungle or that Odd Orange. We'll just have to go for something else besides this Comfort Champ. I will say they should have considered banning the J4 because we could easily yes. see Get Back go for the Gragas again mm -hmm. and then Odd Orange lock the J4. I really like it into Zaya because you have to flash to get out of the Cataclysm. Your Feather Storm doesn't help you. So. That's something that AoE are gonna have to be careful of. Overall, you still have a good bit of skirmishing power and team fight later on, but you still need to pick something that's gonna be able to uh, fight. Okay. Okay, blind Gwen here. That, yeah, you, our face is kind of a, uh, tell right. the story here. A little surprising here for Quacker to take that. I think uh, it's fine. It, it, the thing is, it's just blind. I always have a problem when it's blind like that, especially because if you look at what Niles plays, Niles has a very deep champion pool. He plays a lot of crazy things, and here he's busting out the cannon. True, and it's a, it, that's been a big one for Niles and a big pick overall that I'm a big fan of in the top lane. Really good for facilitating team fight. Really good in basically every laning phase you can imagine. And it's not gonna be an exception here with Quacker as we wait to see what that last pick is gonna be. They're hovering a bunch of stuff to have a little fun with us here. But I'm really waiting for is what Darkwings is gonna be playing there because he has that opportunity for the okay. counter matchup and he knows he's playing into the Gragas because Auto Orange locked Wukong. Yeah, I kind of would have liked to see that Jarvan still. I'm with you, especially in Desire. But Wukong, yeah. very strong right now in the meta, especially sure. with how he's able to disar disrupt a lot of fights and kind of split things up to make it very difficult for teams to actually fight into you. So having that with a nice. cannon as well, I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm not looking at that as real. Wait. Um, is that a mid Gwen or a mid Aatrox? Mid Aatrox. It, it has to be mid Aatrox because that matchup is. Pretty terrible either way, but Aatrox should actually have a really good time into wow. the Gragas. So that pick is very interesting to me. Aatrox has fallen out of favor right. so much, but we've been seeing Darkwings lately lean into those top lanes in the mid lane. First, it was just Cassante, okay. right? And we thought, oh, okay, it's whatever. But now it's the Aatrox, which is really interesting. I mean, you're playing into the Zeri who uh, ult aside is pretty short range. You got a lot of melees that you're mm -hmm. dealing with here. I kind of like the idea, especially with everybody going forward in this composition here. And I mean, looking at Darkwings in his career, he's 4-0 on the Aatrox. Right, it's, it's wild. So, but it's, uh, there's a lot going into that pick. It's pretty cool. It is really cool. And Darkwings as a player, you know, the evolution this player has had, just seeing back when he was on Dignitas Academy last year, then going yeah. down and playing for 100 Thieves next afterwards. This is a player that has really experimented with what he wants to try to bring to the Rift for his team. And here for AoE, given the final pick Aatrox, with one game away from getting a ticket back into the Wait, NACL the summer, summer split. This is going to be a wild one for sure, Beat. You can say that again, Magical. I, that was not on the bingo card. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. <laughs> and uh, overall, again, we talked wild drafts today, that's for sure. Wild cards not even in the game. And Dark Wings busting out the pocket pick that he's had... Um, well, in his pocket for a long time. It's going to be one that Maryville clearly didn't expect. Again, should be good into the Gragas. I haven't seen this matchup in a really long time, but I'm expecting a lot of pressure coming through here from Darkwings in the mid lane. And overall, the fact that Winnie and Skytech have this all-in support jungle duo on the Rel and the Maokai makes that... Aatrox a lot better, in my opinion. Makes it easier when you pop the World Ender to stay on top of people. It does, but I'm also looking at Merrifield and their draft right here. They have a lot of good lockdown tools. Kennen, Wukong, Rakan, a lot of them really good at creating space for Scary Jerry in these fights to make it so that these members of AoE that want to fight into them are going to have a hard time piloting a lot of this unless they can get these leads early. And you look at Maryville's side, 
really good team fighting comp overall. You have a lot of all in here, and there's still a lot of room for Niles to be a big difference maker in these team fights. No exhaust on the side of AoE, and really means that Niles, if he gets ahead, even when he gets to those two, three item spikes, he's going to be doing a lot of damage here. It's kind of hard to play into as the Zaya if he, if not, if uh, Cannon gets on top of you. Mm -hmm. I do like that from Axeman. A little bit of a. Uh... We do a little Gwen bit blinding. of Gwen blinding. Also, the Quack the deck. Shout outs to Quacker and Winnie's time when they were on Wildcard oh, back true. in the day. So, even if you take them out of Wildcard, it seems that they still hold a little bit of that in their hearts with the drafts here. As today, like we said, have been quite wild between the two teams. I'm looking up back to the jungles, back to Odd Orange, and back to Winnie on how they're going to play against each other because. Before, we were seeing a lot more of these really early junglers that wanted to look for these early skirmishes, early fights. And while you can theoretically do that here, both of these really do want to see if they can scale just a little bit more, try to get more control over the other in a far more passive way. And one thing I will say, I was mistaken, Quacker is actually the one to take the exhaust. Usually you see it on the bot lane, but instead it will be on the Gwen to really just kind of reduce the impact of that slicing maelstrom again big team fight ultimate coming through here we're seeing that lane prowess in the top lane in this matchup come to fruition it's just what it's going to be like but it means look at winnie he has two put he has a mid pushing lane here he does have that opportunity to go for early skirmishes potentially for scuttle but that's why you see Psycho moving up as well. This is something Maryville does a good bit. When they have Pryo, they move to invade and make space for Otto. But Winnie did already fully clear his entire jungle. So while Scuttlecraft will be taken by Odd Orange, not going to have that in fade to really get control over Winnie outside of that. Instead, it's going to be Odd Orange having the path immediately to the top half, spotted out by Darkwings as well. Because you got to just kind of mark him for a little bit. Maybe give a little bit of a wiggle room for Winnie to show up to try to contest around that Scuttlecraft. <laughs> Sketch. He said, thanks for hovering, Brom, but who are the other hovers for? Are you cheating on me? So now <laughs> so now that sketch lost their homies, but he was talking a lot of trash before. I like that. Well, I, I think they're homies. Well, no, 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 I know they were always homies, but you know what I mean. It's you trash talk the homies. That's just you how were, it works. Yeah, that's valid. That's valid, yeah. actually. Yeah, exactly. It's, and you always trash talk beforehand, not after. I respect that. I mean... Yeah, and, and if you, of course, like it said, if you want to join the conversation, use the hashtag NACL on Twitter, and we will hopefully feature your tweets on stream, as long as they don't suck. That's the really important part. Yeah, if they suck, you're not getting on. That's, Sorry. Yeah, that's just how it works. As right now, we're having a far more passive game than we've seen throughout the series between both sides. AoE feeling a bit of that pressure since how clean that last game was for Maryville. And Maryville, obviously, with their backs against the wall, losing one game, Knocked them down into the lower bracket. They will still have another chance if they do lose this one to get a spot in the NACL Summer Split. But you wanted to get it now. That's the whole thing. You, getting the ticket earlier is always better. It, it's a big weight off your shoulder where you don't have to feel the pressure of losing the series means the end of the split completely. That's a big confidence thing, especially for AoE's, AoE's side. The fact that they never thought they'd be here. For them to be able to beat everyone else quite handedly for the most part. I mean, they 2 0 their first series. They almost 3 0 this one, still have the potential for the 3 1. Would be a really big confidence builder going back into Challengers League in the summer. That's what they're looking to get. I mean, if it was a best of three, they would have uh, 2 0 Yeah, true. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? Mm -hmm. And now they find themselves here against Maryville. Like I said, far more. Timid game from both sides, but more expected. Really looking for these level six moments for either side to try to find these early skirmishes. Is right there, Winnie. Just getting a little bit of vision on Odd Orange, but not expecting to see anything and un really till these objectives become the big factor. As Winnie is even kind of starting up this dragon a little bit more expect unexpectedly. It's fine, because you have Skytech and Lynx are pushing in at the moment. You can see where the wave is at. And the fact is, Darkwings is level six, has the Warhammer, and also is pushed in his lane. So your chances are pretty good to fight this one out. Darkwings, he's looking for a chance. As Odd Orange, wrong monkey, does bait in a little bit of Sky Tech, but all in all, it still worked out for AoE as they are going to be the ones with the first objective on the board. Hey man, that's Hex Flash. Sky Tech is chilling, happy to blow that on cooldown to make space for engages here. And 
these last couple of games, it's been Maryville who get the dragons first. Now, AoE Gold are going to pick up dragon number one, looking to do a little bit of stacking on their side. Yeah, very different from what we've seen throughout this whole uh, series, as well as just in general for Maryville. A team that has played a lot around the top side, but do tend to try to go for these early stackings of dragons. Going back to how scary Jerry and Psycho have been as laners, where they're the ones usually gaining advantages on their own, so that way Auto Orange can really help out Niles in this top lane. Far that Pryo leads to Maryville having a pretty good control over this top side of the map. And the Rift Herald fight is what I'm most curious about. For the most part, AoE have been heavy prioritizing Rift Herald in the early minutes with a lot of success when we look back at the other games of this series. This time though, they're against the comp where it's gonna be really hard. A lot of that depends on Niles and his ultimate, that slicing Maelstrom. If it gets big value, AoE shouldn't be able to go for that Rift Herald. I'm questioning whether they even attempt it overall. It would be a big shift from how they've been playing out these games this series. I feel like we might see that shift continue because with Niles getting a pretty big lead here against Quackers, constantly forcing him underneath the turret, it's hard to have that backup for Quackers who's got no mana, especially against something like Kennen with what he brings to a lot of these fights now that he's level seven, with Cyclone for Odd Orange as well. Oh, Jerry Jerry. Lightning Crash. I'm surprised to see that used so early, but more looks like they're just getting control. Going back though to what we're talking about, top lane's really where I'm keeping my eyes on because that Rift Herald has been started up by AoE. Remember Niles, Slicing Maelstrom, big team fight ultimate here. Now it's on Lynx, he's pushing in this wave. He's gonna walk up first. Could be Odd Orange just looking for the steal. Waiting it out. Huge ults on the side of MU, getting the stun onto Quacker, taking him down below half. As the Rift Herald does reset. Oh, AoE. Yeah. Having to fall back the moment that happened. The poke just isn't in your favor. And the threat of the all in is even more dangerous. At this point, you're going to see Maryville start it up. Odd Orange should have a pretty easy time. Wondering if we see Winnie go for the steal. There's no vision here. No Walking vision. up. He has been spotted out. Keep in mind, Niles can still path down. Especially the with how roaming. It has been kited back up. Zyko should be here first before Skytech can get in the vicinity. But they get a lot of vision onto Skytech and on to get back here. And that's going to be a lot of damage on to get back using the world. One reset. With the entrance Whoa. with the combo. Combo. Eviscerate AoE. Maryville ripping them to shreds as Skytech, the last surviving member. He'll find the grave soon, too. Get back, sets it up. Niles knocks it down. They're saying they can smell game five in the distance. Huge play from Maryville. It was 0-0 until that moment, and they pick up four kills. Big thing here. Winnie trying to use that ultimate to take down, help take down Get Back. And when you have an Aatrox, you need those resets on the ultimate. But a great engage coming through from Zyko on the Rakan. He's been killing it all series. Sets it up beautifully for the rest of Maryville. That's what I was talking about in draft, right, Beat? Rakan, Wukong, yeah. Kennen. This is what happens when you have all three of them go one after another, layering the CC. You just don't get to play the game. And what we just saw is exactly how Maryville need to keep playing these team fights out. You blow up Dark Wings so that he can't get a reset on the World Ender. That is where he's going to get the most dangerous in these extended team fights. That's what you worry about playing into something like the Aatrox. Uh, and now, you've got two kills for Wukong. You've got a kill up top lane for Niles, so he gets even more control over Quacker as best as he could possibly manage, especially with Kennen. Even mid lane, as you're talking about, how. Darkwing's falling there. Get back was struggling a bit into that lane. Well, he's got himself a kill on a couple of assists. He's going to be in a far better position to fight back against Darkwing's now. You can see AoE still controlling this bottom side of the map with Vision, doing their best to make use of the mid prio Darkwing's has earned with this uh, very interesting counter pick. So, meaning 20 seconds till this next Drake, that's what they want to keep prioritizing. They couldn't get Rift Herald. You can see Lynx is getting up there in terms of uh, items, bringing out these components. He's about to finish a call. AoE liking their chances here, but Odd Orange trying to break up the fight. Odd Orange making sure that Wendy can't join into the pot lane. Giving a lot of breathing room to Scary Jerry so that he can push back that wave and they can rotate up for this dragon as he even dashes over the wall 
Getting the Flash Cone. Get all this distance towards Winnie. On to Darkwing. He's even the Flash out of him as well. While Skytech, a bit late on showing up, so he's not going to get into the position he needs to to have that Magnet Storm just yet. That's not good though. Darkwing's used the World Ender. He doesn't have that big team fight tool that you picked this champion for. There's no way Maryville aren't going to get this dragon. They split them up. AoE has to walk away. And that's another objective in the hands of Maryville with the Rift Herald still to play for. With two ults used by AoE, like you talked about the World Ender, but also the ult from Maokai being used, Flash yeah. from Darkwings. You really can't fight that if you're AoE. You have to forfeit that Maryville. But this is giving more and more control early into the game from Maryville. And Maryville in game three. It was all about this early plays, getting these early leads that snowballed out of control. So AoE, even though they wanted to fight, never were in the position to actually fight on even ground. This is what we talk about with AoE. For better or worse, they are confident in the plays that they make and they are decisive. This time around, not panning out for them here. Not as much to play for. They're almost down 3,000 gold. Soul isn't really in the conversation for them yet. Rift Herald is an odd orange pocket. So really, step number one at this moment is try to read Odd Orange and where he's gonna path with this Rift Herald. Minimize the damage of that play, because if it goes top lane, Niall starts to get ahead or even get back, and you take Dark Wings out of the picture, off the map for a little bit. Maryville really will continue this acceleration. It looks like Odd Orange is playing for the top side. Get that crash for Niles, and Scary Jerry finds Lynx by himself, and with Zyko there too, gonna get the Feather Storm, and nice call right there to nice. take down Zyko, but Scary Jerry 1v2 with the Lightning Crash. Look at the damage that he's able to provide. He's cutting it back. He's got the Scary Jerry flashing forward. Wow. Scary Jerry from Converse to Maryville double kills the bot lane of AoE. Their coach said this was the best bot lane coming out of qualifiers, and Scary Jerry proves it time and time again. Even though the Herald doesn't get what they want fully, Maryville are winning on both sides of the map. Huge plays for the bot lane of Maryville right there. Even if Zyko dies, like you said, this is why they picked up Scary Jerry. They saw this in him when he was able to take Converse to the finals of CeeLo last year. This player has been making so many waves since he first got, came onto the scene. Maryville University making waves in game four here, taking us closer and closer, inch by inch, to a game five and continuing the possibility of that reverse sweep. These are two teams we firmly believed would be the ones to make it into Challengers League in the summertime. There are, of course, questions about who the other teams might be, but these two, all of us as a broadcast, were certain of it. That's why we expected this matchup to be so big. But for Maryville, so important for them to be able to overcome AoE, especially in reverse sweep fashion, to be the first team to make it into Challengers League. Now, bot lane, the flash in, the double nice knock up on to AoE, and guess what? Scary Jerry's free firing, so they can pick up the kill, while Cracker did get a solo kill on Niles on the top side of the map. Maryville are winning out on the bottom half. Big plays, again, Maryville continuing to push the pace here and taking advantage of where they have pressure on the map. Now Odd Orange is also gonna be able to just go ahead and take that buff on the way out. Oh, wait a He's minute. He's gotta be a bit more careful on that one. Nice shield, nice the shield, nice heal. bounce around. Man, Zyko barely keeping his jungler alive. Really clutch. You see AoE trying to find some of these angles to get something. But oh, oh this I, is another one. This is great. This is great plays from ah, AoE looking for anything. They but missed. unfortunately, like you said, it missing. That could have been a good turnaround. And wait, oh, Quacker, you, why are you still here? You beat Niles. You got the 1v1 kill against him. Now he's just going to flash in and make sure that he gets the eventual trade onto you. Eh, not a whole lot you could do there. Teleport comes through. Got to imagine that was what made it happen. Still. Maryville, all across the map now with these little victories here. Now the next Herald, the next Herald has spawned, and you can see Odd Orange get back pathing towards that side of the map. Really easy for them at this stage to pick up this objective and then pick up the next dragon as well. Because Maryville, they have the run of the map now. And this is looking like, even if it's very different style, very reminiscent of game three for Maryville. Early game victories. 
constant pressure they're putting on AoE. This is the story of Maryville throughout the open qualifiers, whether that being how they took down Rock Esports as well. And looking back to the OQ's uh, first one as well, they have always looked for these early plays to completely zone control afterwards, where like, nobody can answer back against them. And right now, they're just doing that again. They have all this control. AoE, you can't fight against them. You're not deserving of being in mid lane against them because you have no gold to fight back and you part against them. Oh, reset. Dark Wings can get reset, but no, he's tied it down. And Blink, he'll trade back, he'll trade up, but he'll die for it all the same with only Quackers being the last th remaining member of AoE. And they're just going to be able to take the Rift Herald, take this next dragon, drop the Rift Herald mid lane as soon as they do. And it's Mary who keep coming out on top in these fights. And they are the ones snowballing this game. We're up 5k now as Maryville University. And it was so important for AoE to get the ball rolling. It's so important for them to get the team fights they were looking for, where Skytech can engage, where Darkwings can get the reset, but they haven't gotten any of that. And it's culminated into this gold lead you're seeing all across the board here, with the exception of bot lane. With the exception of bot lane, but really you have a Zeri that is still two, one, and three. She's doing fine for herself. You have a huge lead in the top lane of four Niles yeah. on Kennen. And it's, everything's just going perfectly for Maryville at the moment. Been pretty good so far. And yeah, Darkwings is getting some good trades in. But this is Gragas we're talking about. Nice little healing in the kit, stacking up the Roa. He's not concerned anymore. It, it just feels like Darkwings' window to use that pressure has closed. And you can see it. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make this play on him. But Darkwings is the one losing out on the poke trade. He is the one who is, has fallen behind and been outpaced by Get Back. As Maryville continue to push back to any control that AoE set up around these objectives, it is still not necessarily over. We've seen already that AoE will skirmish the best they can. There's a lot of shutdown gold they can pick up, but AoE have to find these perfect fights in order to do so. Yeah. And Maryville just have not been giving any opportunity to do so. Right, uh, well, I was gonna say, at this point, no fights are the right fights for AoE. They gotta let this one go. Take down Harold if you see, if you can. But look at Niles. Oh, that was wow. Oh my god, this damage is unreal. And now oh. he's just diving in. He used he the ult at the very end, but there's no Zeri ult. They just finally the Zeri ult used because they have so much they can utilize. That's Gary Jerry. He's in the middle. He's in melee range against Gwen, and he is not deterred. He's got the damage to dash over the wall, too, and Psycho will survive somehow by the skin of his teeth. And AoE forced to go for this engage as they were a little too deep. A nice find from Niles. And it culminates into this, more kills. The Baron is up in two seconds, and we've seen this movie before. Maryville, a 20 minute Baron, is gonna be easily secured. It's different actors, but it is the same movie franchise right now for Maryville. And here we get to take a look at this replay. And like you said, Link didn't even get it all. Oh, he doesn't have it. No, oh, it looked, oh, it just came up as he died. That is the worst feeling. And as soon as that happens, Fight's over. Isn't really anything else you can do. Quacker trying to salvage a Darkwing, trying to save it. And this is what AoE tried to do. They skirmish their way to victory. But when you're down this much gold, it's not enough. No, and Maryville, they've got everything going perfectly again. It is their game, their comeback story here. Down 2-0. Game four, they are now ahead at 9,000 gold at 21 minutes into the game. There's like not really play. much that AoE can do to come back into this game unless they find this pick, but Psycho, they saw him. They saw him with that ward right there. So they know that AoE are hanging out there, that they're all grouped together and like, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not going anywhere near that. It's a big risk. You give away the space for that tier two in the mid lane to go down, it is probably gonna go down anyway. So AoE are just going to try and see what they can do with the space they get. And unfortunately, it's nothing. With that Baron buff, Maryville, who already are up 9,000 gold, have the opportunity to keep stacking that paper. Another tier two is under threat of going down. Niles, it's only a matter of time before he takes it out. Trying to get rid of as many of the minions as possible beforehand. Getting more gold, 10,000 now. 
War Maryville. Last game was clean. This game is even better from Maryville, as right now, they have got every lane going back to what has made them such a great collegiate team with Tej as their coach. It's how they're able to set up these wave states constantly, looking to put pressure on a team like AoE, who came into this one incredibly confidently, and even after two games, you'd expect the confidence to be sky high for AoE. You gotta admit the mental resilience, too, of the players of Maryville. You're down to 2 and those two games were convincing, despite the fact that Maryville had a lot of good angles, made a lot of decent plays. AoE had firmly beaten them. E props to them for not getting tilted. Treating it like a best of one going forward each and every time. And they've been winning them. At least so far, they lost the last one. And they're in a great position to win this one. 11,000 gold now in their favor. And that's what makes such a good team, is how you can learn from your losses and bounce back in a series, especially a yeah. best of five. Because you have options, you have opportunities to learn from what happened in game one, game two, bounce back in game three, where they played so aggressively early into the game. And then here, this game, it might have taken a little bit longer. It wasn't quite the four minute play, but it was the seven minute play. That worked out for Maryville and has gotten them everything since then. Gonna get them more than that, Magical. They're at the soul point now. The Ocean Soul, one of the most powerful in the game. That healing, that sustain, it's gonna make coming back even more difficult, even more of a mountain to climb for AoE Gold. Maryville certainly earned this position for themselves with how they've been playing things out in the early game. And we're at this point where the top side really stepped it up here again. You see the bounties on their heads. You see the fact that very few of them have even died. And it's just a testament to how well Maryville have been skirmishing earlier on into the game, especially these last two games. These last two games have looked great from Maryville. Where if you look at these two games in isolation, you think that this is without a doubt the best team here in the promotion tournament. And yeah. we already expected them to be one of the best. It's all about how you make sure you can continue this, because it is a best of five. This is game four, and if they win this one, they only tie up the series in a do-or-die last match up against AoE. You can see it again, Maryville. Keeping these waves pushed in, the side lanes are in. They're going to have that opportunity to push in this mid wave and just keep control. Baron has expired. But it's fine, because you've got you've done the damage, you've gotten that lead and all these stats. If you compare pound for pound the items coming through here, Maryville are tremendously ahead. And they keep these waves pushed in, they keep choking out the vision, and they're just gonna be able to set up for this rift uh not this rift up, this Baron coming up in about a minute's thirty time. It's almost certainly theirs. For AoE. They do have one more game to play if they lose this one. All they have to do is win one. It's one of three. They have to put out to win in here. 12,000 gold behind. A lot of times teams are starting to think about what to do in game five. What do they do to fix what happened here? But I don't think AoE are that kind of team. AoE are the kind of team that until the bell is rung in a boxing match, they're just gonna, they're, they're the I didn't hear no bell team. They will constantly <laughs> fight until it's finally over. And, until it's eventually over true aoe very resilient in their own right still got to give props to maryville for how well they've been playing this game out the fact that again this is a you this is a universe uh, rather uh, a collegiate program that has done so much in esports overall and has done so much alone here in league of legends it'd be so big for them to be able to be that first team to make it over to challengers league we expect them to make it there but beating out aoe would be such an impressive feat winning this game is a step in that direction taking us to that game five because winning in reverse sweep fashion god damn magical that'd be a story <laughs> right gotta love the kind of cinderella stories here as maryville are knocking on the door of aoe waiting it out slowly but surely Still two minutes until a potential soul could be theirs. They're playing this one very cautiously. With the Baron having spawned as well, they could decide to peel back for that and force the hand of AoE to fight into them. That's the beauty. You can see Niles just has to pop the rocket belt and everyone needs to leave. You gotta run. Oh no, Kennen's running at us? Sorry, that's no bueno. Cannot take that fight at all. And with the map state the way it is, 
Maryville, the map is dark as can be. Of course, the bush play doesn't work because of the farsight, but at the end of the day, Magical, this Baron, with their lead, is so easy to Look get. at the damage that Niles is That's doing ridiculous. to Winnie! He nearly killed him outright, just with landing a couple cues and then the auto attack. Pressing a couple buttons on the keyboard, but AoE, they don't want to let this go, Alex. Winnie doing everything he can, but he is so low and he can't get into the pit reliably. That's why Dark Wings has to lead the charge, but Psycho got the knockup, the dash into the back line, and Dark Wings is low, but he's alive, and here's the slicing male storm for Maryville, wiping the floor with AoE. And you see the teleports coming through, Magical. The spawn timers are too long. Maryville made it happen. The reverse sweep is still on the menu. We're going to game five. We're still on the menu. It's happening right now. This is going on, beatdown. Maryville down 2-0. And off the back of some heroic early game plays in game three and game four, we'll take AoE the full mile. They'll take them to game five, and they'll fight for that final spot, that first spot in the NACL summer split. And what an insane last two games we've been seeing here from Maryville University. Grapes, I know, is jumping for joy in the background, and we'll hear from him soon. But eh, there's nothing else to say, Alex. Let's just, we need, we need a second. Get Silver Scrapes going on. That's what we got to say. We're going to toss it to a break, and we'll be back with our Rally Cry halftime show.